Feliciano is going to talk about generativity in older people. Uh, I think it's, his talk is going to be like a good starting point for further discussions and it's going to be like introducing inspiring ideas that somehow could help us in the future as well. Let me introduce a little bit uh, Feliciano. He is a full-time lecturer at the University of Barcelona and he's coordinator of the Master of Psychogerontology. And his research interests are on active aging, and he's trying to determine which <coughs> activities contribute to aging well. Uh, and he does that looking at both communities and institutional settings. And he's also interested in what are the implications of these uh, ideas of aging well and active aging uh, for personal and social um, issues. And with this, I finish my presentation. Uh, this um, lecture is right now going on a streaming. It's going to be as well available afterwards, afterwards in the YouTube channel of our university, Open University of Catalonia. So I don't know if anyone is following us online. But in case you want to follow us, uh, you can send ask questions for Feliciano afterwards. We have like two hours for these sessions and uh, questions and answer period at the end. For those who want to uh, make questions, you can use uh, both two hashtags. One is hashtag act ACT project or another, the other hashtag would be IN3, as for the name of our institute, IN, aging IN3. So, just welcome everyone. Thank you. Uh, Feliciano, floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Mireya, for inviting me, and thank also to the whole network for well for the opportunity to be here with with you. First of all, uh, I want to apologize for my English. That is uh, just terrible. Yeah. It is, really, it is really a challenge for me to speak an hour and a half in English. Eh? It's the first time I do it, so uh, be com comprehensive, please. Eh? So uh, maybe the first slide that uh, almost any gerontological talk uh, would have is, is the same, mm? and a slide that shows how uh, older people is growing in numbers, how the whole world population is, uh, is increasing. Eh? The whole aging population is increasing. I will save this slide and I will focus eh, in contrast in another phenomenon that I think that it is also well known but is not so well publicized. Eh? Is about, uh, it is the phenomenon related to the new phase of aging. Hmm? Not only there are more aged uh, people, but the older people we have now are quite different from the older people we had in the past. Eh? Older age is, is not at all what it used to be. Hmm? So uh, this change in the phase, in the, in the profile of, of older people happens in a context in which we still have some uh, uh, myths about uh, what is aging and what should be uh, growing old. Eh? So before starting with that uh, myth, I will talk in my presentation about four topics. One is what is aging well. Eh? The second one is what is generativity and I will argue if we need, we really need a new concept of that concept for concept, uh, conceptualize aging well. Huh? So uh, afterwards, I will show you the kind of um, activities that I would consider to be generative ones. Mm -hmm. And finally, we, I'd like to discuss with you mm, and to reflect upon uh, what kind of aging well concepts we need. Mm? So, as I said, we grew in a world in which uh, this uh, older age many times 
despite the fact that I consider I and many, many colleagues co consider aging population as a gift, as a really a wonderful fact, eh? despite so, still many people uh, think that older age is a problem hmm? from a social and um, from a personal point of view. So uh, in, many di in many times uh, people think that all of the people are the same. Hmm? People think that uh, all the people and illness is a, a substantial and intrinsically linked part of aging. Hmm? What we know that is not the case. Eh? Even many people think that dementia and disability are uh, always happen uh, in, in older age. Eh? Many people uh, think that uh, old dogs cannot uh, learn new tricks, eh? what is entirely false. Eh? Many people think that older people is a uh, older age is a time for isolation, eh? and also uh, that older people are improductive. Eh? What about this point? I will I will show you some data afterwards. Eh? So that narrative of decline of considering older people as a time of irreversible deterioration eh, in all the aspects of life, not only in the biological ones, but also in the social, in the psychological uh, aspects, has been dominant for many years. Mm? So according to that narrative, older people basically is or are a burden. A burden for societies, a burden for families, mm? yeah, and, and a risk for the sustainment of the welfare state. Mm? Uh, in the newspapers I, I do with exercise with my, with my students, I, I ask them to look for people, uh, for mm, news related with older people. Mm? And all the, all the pieces of news uh, they, they found are in the economical part of the, in the financial part of the, of the newspapers, eh? other people as a risk, basically, and also related to illness, to crime, hmm? to that negative uh, aspect that has been traditional when thinking about aging. Hmm? So is this, uh, is this profile of life trajectory what is uh, implicit in that mm, negative narrative of aging. Eh? There are a first part of the, of the lifespan that is characterized by, by gain. Eh? There is a, a central stage in which people more or less can, can be stable. And aging basically is the reversal of childhood and adolescence. Mm? is a time of irreversible decline. Luckily, mm, luckily uh, some decades ago, we, uh, in the scientific and in, uh, arena, eh, this, uh, this narrative of decline has been uh, refused, in a way. Eh? And, uh, when we look at the face of older people, we uh, notice that uh, this face is not at all mm, the one that we could expect from that uh, decline narrative. For instance, uh, regarding to health, the new older people, the, new, the older people we have now, uh, they are, if we look at the life expectancy, life expectancy, not only in terms of of total years, but in terms of, of uh, life without disability, eh, we have that uh, people are, uh, who arrive at 65, eh, uh, they will have more than uh, three quarters of their life expect expectancy uh, free of disability. So people are going healthier not only we are growing older, hmm? even at 80, hmm, 
that is quite an advanced age, uh, uh, people who arrive at 80 uh, should expect that at least half of their life expectancy will be free of disability. So disability, dependency, dementia is not at all an intrinsic part of, of older age and older people are normally, mm, are usually in good health, in, relatively, in relative good health. But not only this, but if we look at the levels of education, we also notice the same thing. The face of aging is changing. Eh? Older age, uh, uh, older people are, are uh, getting more and more educated. And this variable, as you know, is crucial, uh, is a crucial predictor of many good things. Hmm? So if we look at the, at the bottom of the, of the education hmm, the staircase, uh, we have that in Spain, the quantity of uh, the percentage of illiterate or, or older people or, or people with very few years completed of uh, study are going up, are, are reducing dramatically in the new older uh, generations. Eh? And if we look at the top of the staircase, obviously the picture is uh, just the contrary. Hmm? Going, uh, go to the university that has, that in, in Spain at least was very rare eh? for people who now have 80 or 70 plus. Eh? Now, with the new generation of uh, baby boomers is quite usual. Eh? More than 50% eh? have gone, have uh, studied uh, in the university. A third fact that uh, adds more thing to this new phase of aging, new, more optimistic phase of aging is one thing that probably you should uh, know much better than me. Mm? That is the, mm, the digital divide, the digital gap. Huh? The digital gap 10 years ago was just spectacular. Huh? The younger generation, uh, uh, more than 80% of the younger generation have uh, used internet, but only less than 20% or even less than 5% of the older generation used internet 10 years ago here in Spain. Hmm? Now this digital gap um, still exists, of course, but is much, much, uh, much smaller hmm? and will be more and more uh, which be, uh, will be less and less and smaller in the future. Hmm? And, thi and this uh, variable, this factor, hmm, as well as education, uh, predicts a lot of optimistic things about uh, what people uh, can do, what interest people have. Hmm? So, we are in the, l in the latest two decades, uh, at least from the 80s, we are uh, uh, witnessing the emergence of a new, more optimistic uh, narrative of aging. Eh? So it's important to to make this this uh, narrative stronger. That uh, we have, we should we should take into account, not into account not only biological factors, but only sociocultural and personal factors. Right? If we only look at the biological factors, probably the decline narrative still uh, stands. Mm? But the, if we take into account the sociocultural factors and the personal factors, probably uh, the scope, the variety of aging trajectories will be far uh, wider. Mm? So. We can talk about the emergence of a relative optimism regarding adult uh, development at, and aging. Uh, uh, research on this area has shown that uh, some gains could be present in older age. Eh? Gains related to wisdom, to emotional development, and in many other areas, only 
just to mention a few. And uh, the intervention in older age is not only restricted to palliative uh, care, mm, but also to intervention focused on prevention and of uh, also in promotion of growth. Mm, a more optimistic stance. This emphasis on aging well that, that has been with us for at least three, mm, two or three decades so far, uh, uh, have, have been on this, uh, have give rise a, a diversity of concepts about how to understand and how to study uh, and how to promote that uh, optimistic way of aging. Hmm? One of these is, of course, this uh, concept that you know very well. Eh? It was maybe the first, one of the first, the concept of successful aging. Hmm? Uh, unfortunately, there are many visions of what is uh, successful aging. Eh? This is the classical one eh? proposed by Rowe and Kahn uh, they proposed that successful aging uh, was, uh, was composed by, by three ingredients. Low probability of suffering from severe illnesses, high functional capacity, and, uh, and an active involvement with life. Hmm? That can be oper 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 <laughs> operationalized. Huh? as uh, having a good and wide uh, social network or uh, being involved in productive activities. So the outcomes of this view of successful aging are uh, quite objective, objective in some way, is the, an increase in longevity and a reduction of, morbidi of morbidity. But this is not the only version of successful aging we have, as you know, in the 80s, a uh, German researcher, uh, whose name was Paul Baltes, eh, uh, proposed an alternative view of what is successful aging. And his view uh, was not of, uh, he proposed that uh, having success in uh, older age is, is not reaching an ideal state, but is uh, being involved in a short, in a variety of adaptation processes. Hmm? It's a more processual view of what is succe success than the view uh, of uh, Rowe and Kahn. Eh? For him, uh, the key concepts of, the key ingredients of successful aging are plasticity, resilience, and adaptation. And this is, uh, understood that as, the, as putting in practice uh, coping strategies such as uh, selection, optimization, and compensation. Uh, the, out the outcomes here are not objective outcomes, but uh, he opens the concept to a more subjective outcomes in terms of satisfaction and in terms of well-being. Mm? Successful aging has produced a lot uh, of uh, research, uh, but it is not the only concept uh, that have addressed the, that kind of aging well uh, movement. There is another one, this one, productive aging. Hmm? So, as you know, this if successful aging is an individual concept, from the successful aging perspective, having success, having uh, aging well is a thing that you can put in your pocket, basically. Eh? It's individual. Eh? From this perspective, from the perspective of productive aging, aging well is also uh, an issue that has to do with uh, make contributions to the society. Eh? And contributions that at, la at, at least in, in some, to some views, uh, imply uh, activities that have a market value. Mm? 
explicit market value, for instance, in the case of, of work, of, of staying in the, in, the, in the labor market, or implicit and uh, not so obvious, like, for instance, making volunteering activities, or household work, caregiving, mm, and so on. In sum, this is a more social view of what is aging well. And what are the outcomes? The outcomes are not individual. The outcomes are also social. The outcome, the, the main outcome is the sustainment and improvement of the community of the welfare state. Mm? Uh, from this perspective of productive aging, mm, there are some interesting uh, papers, some interesting studies in which uh, the authors have tried, have attempted to, uh, to count in dollars or in, or in euros which are the real contributions of older people to their communities, to their to the society, to uh, put a contrast with that view of aging as a burden, as a risk to the welfare state, to the sustainment of communities. This is one made here in Spain by uh, one of our pioneer pioneers in, in, the study, in the study of aging from a psychological perspective. Mm? His name is Rocío Fernández Ballesteros, and she calculated how much how, value, uh, how much in euros is the value of activities that other people make. Eh? As you know, the European e Union is a factory of producing statistics, among other things. Mm? We have a lot of uh, statistics. Eh? So we know exactly how many people, uh, what, how percentage of older people do uh, many things, also. Mm. how many uh, care for adult relatives, how many care for, ch for their children, how many care uh, to, how many are in charge of shopping, in charge of uh, management of the house, in charge of household, of household work. And the author, Rocio Fernandez de Estero, calculated the value of an hour in the market of every activity. And mm, he basically, she basically uh, make the, the calculation. Yeah? And the total amount is 106 billions of euros in Spain, only in Spain. Mm? We can discuss if, if some of these activities are really productive or not. Mm? I think it's open to discussion, but, but the Total, the, the, the figure, the final figure is quite astonishing. Hmm? Who said that older people are, were a burden? Hmm? But uh, we have the successful aging perspective, the productive aging perspective, and of course, the active aging perspective. Hmm? How many concepts? Hmm? This is, this is uh, getting a mess. Huh? What is a Active aging, hmm? as you know, active aging was a concept uh, promoted by the World Health Organization that in 2002 uh, defined active aging as the process of, opt of optimizing opportunities for health, participation, and security in order to enhance quality of life of, as people age. It applies to both individuals and population groups. Uh, so from in its original formulation, active aging was composed of three main uh, ingredients. Uh, health, mm, physical health, as well as mental health and well-being. Participation, mm, social, economic, spiritual, and civic activities, as well as the participation in the labor market. And security, uh, this is quite an innovation uh, from, from the previous uh, concepts. Uh. So to have settings that are secure from a social and architectural point of view, to have financial security and security at work. Eh? So active aging, despite being proposed from, uh, from a political perspective, mm, 
uh, it seems to, to be a good combination of the social and the individual uh, perspectives that successful aging and productive aging were examples of. Hmm? But in practice, in practice, at least here in Europe, that two, that two activities has been mm, highlighted uh, far beyond the other ones. Eh? The activity related to the participation of older people in the labor market and uh, that uh, idea of, el of uh, older, of later life as a stage in which you should be uh, physically active. Mm? Some authors say that that particular, uh, particular emphasis in just these two activities, uh, and if you look at, at, the, at the active aging index promoted by the, published by the European Union, this, uh, this activity is very important in, in, the, in the composition of that index. Uh, some authors say that, in fact, emphasizing these two, these two uh, activities has to do with uh, implicit, implicitly, implicitly uh, thinking that aging is a problem and that we have to promote their participation in the, in the labor market to save um, pension expenses, basically, and we should, uh, we should promote activity, physical activity in older age, basically to save health expenses. Hmm? So in practice, this active aging uh, concept uh, many times, not always, but many times uh, embraces a reductionist view of what it means to be active. Eh? And maybe certain groups, for instance, people who are already, already retired, people suffering from illness, has some difficulties in reaching the high standards of activity that uh, from this perspective is being proposed. So, do we need a new concept? What is the role of the main topic of my talk here? The generativity concept. Eh? We have many concepts already. Successful aging, productive aging, uh, active aging, healthy aging. Eh? That is the new one that, that the World Health Organization is promoting in, in his last uh, document published in 2015. Eh? So, from my perspective, I think that this new concept, the generativity uh, one, can in a way be um, an integration of some of the positive things that the other concepts have. Hmm? And can be, in my view, and I will argue that uh, in a moment, can be an umbrella concept that, uh, that uh, could be more wa uh, could be wider than the other ones eh, and could have some particular uh, positive aspects, <coughs> advantages than the rest of, of the concepts doesn't have. Mm? As you know, probably, uh, generativity is a concept proposed by this, this guy, this uh, alpha, this investigator, eh? Eric Erickson. Eh? Just to remember, uh, Eric Erickson proposed in the, in the 50s of the last centuries a theory that was the first developmental one, one of the first, not the first, one of the first developmental theories that takes into account not only infancy, not only childhood, but also but the whole, the whole uh, lifespan, the entire lifespan. Uh, and he understood uh, development uh, throughout the, the lifespan as a development of a sequence of crises of, uh, of life issues, of life themes that are uh, high, that are uh, linked to particular stages of life. Hmm? Uh, his theory 
contemplates uh, includes uh, eight stages. In the on the slide, we uh, I have only put the last four. Hmm? So the the because the first one are, are basically the same stages as the ones proposed by by Freud, eh? because education uh, was a psychoanalyst. Uh, was in the psychoanalysis movement. Huh? So what is the main life theme for adolescents? The construction, building a personal identity. That is to ask seriously for the first time to the question, what want, uh, what, the question in Spanish I have very clear, the question in English is not so clear <laughs> to translate it. <huh? laughs> What, uh, what I want to do when I grow older. Mm? Mm? The response to this question in adolescence is not, I want to be an astronaut. Mm? It's not, I want to be a soccer player. Uh, it's something more serious for the first time. Mm? So that creation of a life project. Mm? Uh, Ericsson uh, linked to, uh, to each life uh, crisis or life theme uh, if uh, the person can solve the crisis successfully the, their ego will grow in terms of accumulating a new, a new competence in, in that case responsibility hmm? the life theme in young uh, adulthood adulthood is intimacy that is to risk my personal project uh, by, by creating an intimate uh, link with another person to create a shared life project. Mm -hmm. The life theme in middle adulthood is generativity. This is our main topic. Uh. Generativity means, and I will see it in, in a moment, means to care for the next generation. Uh, and Ericsson links generativity basically, not exclusively, to that urge to have children in middle adulthood. Uh. We are talking about the 50s, last century. Uh. It's quite another historical period. Uh. And what uh, Ericsson, uh, what Ericsson uh, mm, proposed for all their adulthood, for all their age. Eh? He proposed the developmental task of mm, integrity. That is, looking back to your whole life and uh, have the sense of uh, your life has been worth living, eh? that uh, despite the mistakes, eh? mm, your life has, has a sense, eh? has, a, has a meaning. So, in Ericsson's original, original proposal, generativity was exclusively linked to middle adulthood. And our proposal, it's not my proposal, but there are many people in this, in this uh, stance, uh, we propose that in, that in the light of the new phase of aging, that aging more mm, healthier, uh, more ed educated, uh, more motivated than in the past, and uh, more um, technologically advanced, uh, it could make sense to um, expand generativity interest also to older age uh, and see what happens uh, and see if this idea could make sense. Mm? So, what is generativity? In terms of uh, Ericsson, uh, generativity is a concern for the guide and care for the next generations and uh, the, commi the commitment to the improvement and sustainment of the community. Hmm? And asking my previous uh, question, what are the specific good points of generativity that maybe other concepts like successful aging, active aging, hmm? productive aging doesn't have? I think it is, there are these three. Hmm? Generativity 
in contrast with the other concepts, is exclusively focused on the concept of development in many facets. Eh? We will see now. Eh? If we speak about generativity, we are speaking about how people develop and how societies develop. Hmm? Second positive point in my view is that generativity, if it's caring for the next generation, it implies intrinsically that intergenerational point of view that is in some way absent from the other aging world concepts. Hmm? This is the intergenerational view is very important uh, from this, from this uh, point of view. Huh? And third, uh, the generativity approach facilitates an interdisciplinary uh, approach to older age hmm? from the research point of view. Huh? We have said that suce successful aging is basically a concept that can be biological, clinical, or can be psychological. Uh, active aging and productive aging has more social components. Uh, mm, in uh, productive aging, for instance, has been very used by, by economists, mm, by social scientists. Uh, and this concept, generativity, can be a link between the human, personal, uh, behavioral sciences and the social ones, uh, in my view. Mm -hmm. So, we have that generativity, in my view, is uh, and, his, and, and his operationalization in terms of activities, of generative, uh, of generative activities, uh, we will discuss what kind of, act of activities could be generative in, in, in the following slides. Uh, it links intrinsically the person and their social context. A person, an individual that have some competences for participation, hmm, for contributing, hmm, for caring, hmm, for trying to, to, to leave a legacy, hmm, to leave the world a, a better, uh, better off of what uh, the world he or she found. Huh? And links that person with certain competences with the social context, context in which they can or not or cannot participate. So the social context have some possibilities for participation. Some, some contexts are very participation friendly for other people, other contexts, other contexts, other social milieus are not so mm, friendly. Mm? There are not so many opportunities for other people to participate. Mm? By uh, executing generative activities, we are, in a way, uh, uh, contributing to the social development. Uh, to the improvement of the society, of the context in which we participate. But at the same time, and in a kind of virtuous circle, that activity also, uh, also improves, uh, also boosts our personal development, our growth. Hmm? So in that way, generativity can be a link between social development and personal development. If we take into account this scheme, we can even imagine different things of promoting generativity if we want to do so. Huh? One of these is increasing the competences for participation. Hmm? How? By training, training older people. Huh? In this case, training is, in my view, a serious training, not training for the sake of training. Eh? Training to, in, in its instrumental uh, uh, aim. Eh? So if we pr promote training with also instrumental aims in older age, we are going to increase competences for participation. We are going to have uh, people more, more capable of participation 
of participate more and better. Mm? And on the other hand, we can also promote generative, uh, generative activities by uh, implementing social policies mm, in the macro, the macro policies or the micro interventions that uh, make social contexts more prone to accept and to give opportunities uh, to older people for their participation. Mm? So, in contrast with some versions of successful aging mm, that links aging to just uh, satisfaction, and I am fully agree with that. Mm? I'm happy with, with that idea that older age is a time for, for, uh, for having positive emotions, for recreation, for leisure ac activities. Yeah? I think that older people deserve that kind of mm, joy. Yeah? I'm not at all against them. But if we take, take into account that generativity approach, we can think that maybe many people will, uh, will embark, will, will be involved in leisure activities, traveling, going to older people clubs. Here in Spain, it's a very, it's a very popular activity for older people. Eh? People go there to, to play in cards or, or to dance. Eh? That's OK, fantastic. Eh? No problem with that. But maybe in the context of, the, of this new phase of aging, the new older people we are, we are, we are meeting, eh? maybe some of them eh, would want to have to go a step farther, hmm? a step up, huh? and to be involved in activities that, in a way, is not only having positive emotions, that, and, and this is so important that is in the base of the pyramid. Huh? If when you are 70 or 80, if you don't extract some pleasure of what you do, probably you won't do it. This is a big contrast with, with my, my younger studies, huh? students. Huh? I will say, I, w I always say to them, probably more of you are very bored here, hmm? listen to me, but you have to be there because you want something that is ahead. Hmm? You want your certificate, you want to be a psychologist, huh? and uh, you, have, you, want to, uh, you have to suffer. My <laughs> My classes, eh? but older people don't suffer. Don't suffer for free, at least. Hmm? If older people, uh, I am a teacher also in a, in an older people university, and if my older students don't like my classes, they will stay hmm, for a while, maybe to be polite, and the next day they won't come again. Hmm? Basically, because this aspect of positive emotions, as Laura Carstensen has said, is very, very important, is increasingly important as we grow older. Mm? So, as well as having fun, some people maybe would want to have fun doing things that uh, promote their personal development. For instance, that older students that I have. But, a step, a step further, maybe some, maybe not, not so many, eh? at least in Spain, but I hope that in the future there will be more and more people that will want, would want to do activities that as, w as well as, as, as contribute to their satisfaction, to generate positive emotions, as well as promote their personal development, also can promote the development of community. Mm? The three things at the same time. If we are able to go up uh, this pyramid, we will turn successful aging, or that subjective version of successful aging at least, to maybe a more, 
a more ambitious mm, view of what is aging well, uh, that is generative aging. Mm. I think to understand this uh, scheme uh, uh, correctly, I would say that I at all will, uh, would do generative aging compulsory. No, older people have gained their freedom. And I think freedom is a good thing of getting older. You are more free. Hmm? What I am saying is that we have to, to facilitate opportunities for those older people who want to go up the pyramid eh, so that they can go up, really. Hmm? Hmm? Opportunities in terms of training, for instance, or in, ter in terms of social policies that uh, promote uh, that kind of generative activities. Mm? So, the second point, mm? the first positive thing of generativity uh, uh, was uh, the emphasis on uh, development. Mm? The second is the emphasis in the interdiscipline. Uh? So, this scheme can be understood in terms of human and social science for, for one uh, hand and behavioral and educational science for the other one. And the generative activity is a kind of intersection between two, between both of them. Mm? But even more, this scheme can be, this figure can be understood as the intersection of basic studies mm, whose aim basically is to know more, to know how, how the world functions and apply it the studies. Eh? That the studies who are more uh, aimed at improving some things of the, of the, of the world. Eh? So the activity come is again the intersection between the basic and the applied, between the individual and the social, eh? between the human and social science and the educational and behavioral ones. Eh? So to me it's a very attractive concept in this, in this uh, way. Mm? And also from that point of view of interdiscipline, mm? we have models of generativity beyond the Ericsson's proposal. Eh? This is the proposal of one uh, important psychologist that is, whose name is uh, Dan McAdams. Mm? Probably you know him, he's very famous. Eh? Uh, and, and Dan McAdams proposed a multi-compound uh, model of generativity. Mm? For him, there are two uh, original forces, two original reasons to be generative. One is cultural demand, that is the expectation that in, at some point in our lives society has uh, put on us to be generative. Mm? And the second reason is an inner desire, an internalization of this desire to be generative. That McAdams links to a sense of in a way of generating things that, that can survive us. And in that way, we can uh, attain a symbolic immortality. Mm? And that uh, need, that is the need to be needed, eh? to have something that depends on us, eh? than so something or someone that we can care and we are responsible of their well-being. Mm? So, these reasons, uh, uh, as a result, we develop or not a concern for the next generation. Mm? This, is, this is the attitudinal side of generativity. Generativity as an attitude, as, a, as an interest, as a concern, as a psychological state. Eh? But this attitude side, eh, in some cases, Mm? through commitment can be, uh, can be put into action, put into practice uh, 
uh, uh, by the commitment in generative actions. Mm? This is the behavioral side of generativity. So we have an attitudinal side, uh, behavioral side, uh, actions that involves in any way creating, maintaining, and offering. Mm? And this last compound is very interesting, is that generativity can be understood and can be reflected too in, the, in how people narrate themselves, uh, in people's life stories. Uh, and McCann's has uh, have a very interesting set of publications about what is the typical narration, narrative of generative people. So from this model, we can combine a quantitative approach to, the, to, the, to generativity by scales and questionnaires, for instance, there is a very popular scale to measure uh, generative concern, the LGS, Loyola Generativity Scale. Uh, and why not uh, also incomplete sentences? There are some studies using this technique. Eh? And on the other hand, we also have that qualitative approach that maybe is more suited to this compound of narration. Mm? Uh, thematic analysis, narrative analysis, maybe sometimes participant ob observation, and of course we can mix both approaches. Mm? So from the point of view of the academy, generativity is also very interesting mm? from this methodological point of view. Mm? And how the different components can be related. Eh? So, if we have generativity in later life, mm? in which <coughs> specific activities can be expressed? Mm? We have divided in our model two kind, two, two groups of activities. One is, uh, includes activities that are put into practice in the family context, in that kind of micro context. Eh? Activities like parenthood, grandparenthood, care for dependent persons, mm? among others. Mm? We can imagine some others too. Mm? And on the other hand, we also, we also can express our generativity concern by uh, activities that are uh, that are put into practice in the community. For instance, mm, being involved in, in the labor market, eh, volunteering, and political activism. Mm. So in our view, generativity is a kind of umbrella concept that opens new, or not so new, but uh, uh, new uh, avenues to study uh, activities that are key for the sustainment and the development uh, of societies and also the development of uh, individuals. Mm? Obviously, these activities can be promoted, as I said uh, before, by, so by some social policies or by education and training. And the outcomes of generativity mm, are individual and social. Yeah, in the, from an individual point of view, well-being, growth, empowerment can be the result of being involved in generative activities. Mm? And from a social point of view, uh, an increase in social capital uh, and a promotion of intergenerational links could be the result of uh, that generative activities. Uh? Because, as I said before, generativity intrinsically has this intergenerational mm, point of view. Mm? On the, it emphasizes that intergenerational links. So we can maybe be closer to attain that uh, United Nations motto of uh, creating a society for all ages. Eh? If you want to... to uh, 
get deeper in that intergenerational point of view, I, we published a paper in 2014 that is called A Field in Search of Concepts, The Relevance of Generativity to Understanding Intergenerational Relationships. Uh, I, will, I, I will leave this uh, paper in, the, in, a, in, a, in a folder. Uh, yeah, uh, so it, uh, uh, okay. And uh, and at this point, I uh, want to get a bit into details in each uh, kind of activity, just to to well to see mm, super superficial su uh, see in a bit what are the opportunities of generativity, of studying uh, generativity in each of these activities. Eh? For instance, hmm? parenthood, hmm? you know. Being older and being parent is not contradictory at all. Hmm? Hmm? Parents are parents for all their life. Eh? Uh, even when when uh, when your children leave home, you continue to be their parent, and you and you continue to contribute to their development, to their well-being. Eh? There are an array of uh, of uh, interesting studies eh, that look at the interchange of care, of services, of money to between the older generation and the already emancipated uh, middle-aged generation. And they say, they have found that that transfers mm, are more favorable to the middle-aged generations uh, and only turns favorable to the older one at very advanced age. Mm. That, for instance, in Spain, in the recent crisis, many families eh, have, uh, have survived thanks to the contributions of, of the older generations, of, of the older parents. Hmm? That is, the paternal home, the parents are our security net, eh, to which coming back is always possible hmm? if anything bad happens. Eh? And sometimes bad thing happens. Eh? Uh, the supposed role reversal, uh, that conception of that as parents grow older, mm, more and more their children are parenting them. Mm, this is not true until a very advanced age or until uh, the older uh, generation and just if the older generation suffer from mm, dementia, from some severe disability. Mm, not is uh, that role reversal is not the usual case in most older people. Eh? And, uh, by the way, in Spain, the emancipation age is, is uh, beyond 30 years old. Eh? So many older people, many people over 60 and over 65, already have children at home. Eh? Because due to financial reasons, eh, they cannot uh, emancipate due to the labor market too. Hmm? Grandparenthood maybe is the most typical generative activity. Hmm? In today's families, eh, as you know, families are, uh, some, some scientists say that families are, are changing, of course, and are more verticalized now. That kind of beanpole families in which many generations live together at the same time, but the wide of generation is, is, uh, is, re is reducing. We have less brothers and sisters, and we have less uncles and aunts. Eh? So in these families, obviously the role of uh, grandparents is uh, getting uh, more important. Particularly, according to the European Union data, 
particularly in the southern countries of Europe, eh? in which uh, the role of grandparents as caregivers, eh? in some cases giving auxiliary caregiving, eh? is very important. Eh? In Spain, in my opinion, is basic for, for many families. Eh? I think that the, 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 the main, the main uh, mm, way for families to conciliate work and parenting is the grandparents, hmm? not the social legislation, not the social benefits, at least not in Spain, but grandparents. Hmm? If your family doesn't have a grandparent, hmm? probably you, should, you have to pay hmm, for someone to, to take care of your children, or maybe you cannot uh, work even if you want, eh? because hmm? particularly in Spain, still women hmm? opt for this, uh, for abandoning the labor market. Hmm? And as well as this uh, caring, uh, uh, caring uh, task of grandparenting, they hmm? uh, also can uh, be uh, well, the source of memories and the value transmitters mm, in many families. Mm. So they are also <coughs> an example of how, how uh, what it is aging eh, for children mm, and for, for grandchildren. Mm. And in extreme cases, mm, if parents cannot exercise their role because of some bad things, but for instance, drug addiction, for instance, imprisonment, for instance, death of the parents. Of course, the first figure, uh, if they are available, are grandparents. They are the ones that uh, care for grandchildren. Eh? This is a very special situation. Maybe we are, we, in our group, is, uh, we are discussing if this particular situation is generative or not. Eh? Because generativity has something to do with doing things mm, at will, because you want, not because you are forced to do it. Eh? The third potentially generative activity is the care for dependent uh, relatives. Eh? Because, at least here in the south of Europe, most uh, caregiving is performed in the family context, not in the institutional context. Eh? The institutional solution exists, of course, but it's very, very expensive, it is difficult to, to access to them, and many people simply doesn't want. Eh? Because, at least in Spain, still exists a bad image of uh, not very good image of, uh, of nursing homes. Mm? So, uh, if the spouse is alive, she or he is the one who is most likely to care. Eh? In case of widowhood, uh, children are the ones who normally uh, have more numbers, more chances, more, more odds to care for their grandparents, but children but to be children doesn't mean, in this case, to be young, because many children are old. Hmm? It's not strange at all, it's not rare that people of 60, 65, 70 care for, uh, for parents who are 90, 85, 80. Hmm? This is not strange at all. Hmm? So uh, thinking about children, in this case, is not thinking about middle adulthood, not always. Hmm? And with the longevity gains, probably the situation will be more frequent in the future. Hmm? This, uh, this activity, care, caregiving, uh, has traditionally been studied um, through the lens of uh, stress, through the lens of uh, burden. We, in our group, we have tried to explore if more positive things, for instance, generativity, can be exp expressed as well eh, 
in this uh, activity and we have uh, found that generativity indeed can play a role. Uh. Obviously for many people caregiving is a burden, uh. it's a source of stress uh. and uh, we have to, to, to cope with this situation but at the same time and it's not, it's not uh, a contradiction, uh, many caregivers have expressed us that their tax their task is also a source of satisfactions, a uh, way in which they can express this, this desire of giving, mm? of in many times giving back mm? what you received when you were younger. Mm? As for the communities, mm? we have paid work, uh, as you know the trend in Europe mm, at least is uh, the promotion of, uh, of older people who stay in the labor market to increase the retirement, the compulsory retirement age, that will, uh, will have the result of more, of more older people being uh, in working roles and, giving, and being paid for doing it. Mm? And when we ask to people who are not retired but who are about to retire if they want to stay longer in the labor market, many of them, eh, it depends basically on the type of, of job, eh, many of them would like to be a bit more in the labor market and to have more flexible plans of retirement. Mm? So mm, in countries with compulsory retirement age and of course in countries in which the, uh, this retirement age doesn't exist other workers of course keep on contributing to the sustainment of, of society and paid work can be an activity that can uh, uh, channel these generative desires. Hmm? Maybe if grandparenting is the typical generative activity in, in the family, mm, volunteering is the typical generative activity in the community, uh, outside the family. Uh. There are hundreds or thousands of studies about volunteering and how good is volunteering for older, for older people. Uh. Mm. Uh, in Southern Europe and in our country, uh, volunteering is not so popular than in the countries of Northern Europe or in the States. Hmm? Here in Spain we have more or less around 6-7% of people over 65 who are volunteering. Eh? One, uh, this is not because Spanish older people are not as altruist as Americans once. Maybe they devote, allocate more time to the family maybe. Hmm? This is a kind of balance. Eh? If you allocate more time to the family, what is typical here in the south of Europe, you, you don't have time to, to, to devote to that uh, voluntary activities. And also, in the case of Spain, we have to take into account that the, uh, the actual, the present older people grow in a context that doesn't promote at all the participation in the civil society. Eh? They grown uh, in uh, a dictatorship for 40 years mm? and in that time when they were younger uh, participation was, was, was not, not only it was not promoted but it was punished so many older people are not used to that uh, way of, of giving time to, to the civic society. This is also true for the next uh, generativity activity that is political uh, participation. Mm? So as we know uh, in this uh, new uh, phase of aging with, uh, more, <coughs> with more health, more education, mm? maybe volunteering will be more popular in the future even here in the south of Europe. Uh. And as you know, being a volunteer predicts many good things, and many things are the same as the things that are attached to generativity. Hmm. So, for instance, uh, not longevity in this case, but 
uh, well-being and uh, outcomes in the social community. Eh? It is supposed that uh, uh, volunteering promotes social capital and promotes communities that are stronger, that are more safe. Hmm? So it's an important factor for creating this uh, social capital using the Putnam concept. Hmm? And finally, of course, political activism. Hmm? We have some nice research on political activism. Uh, we have done that studies in the last few years. I have put one of the papers who, who, who contain the results of our studies in the, in the folder that I, leave to, I left to Mireya. So all other people have an increasing voting strength. In Spain, for instance, one out of three voters are people over 65. So it's, an import, it's a very important voting strength and politicians know that of course eh? yeah. and uh, they they address their political messages in political campaigns to that specific sector of the population eh? but in contrast eh, if we look at the parliaments if we look at the judiciary system eh, if we look at the, at the governments at the executive Mm, system, eh? older people are absent. Hmm? There is, uh, I don't have the, the numbers here, but in the last, uh, in the in the last socialist uh, uh, government here in Spain, only four or five percent of the three uh, three uh, hundred fifty deputies, Spanish deputies, were people of 60 uh, years of old and over. Only 4 or 5 percent. Mm? The representation in the whole population is now 18 percent. Mm? So they are underrepresented. Even in the judiciary system, mm, you know that older people are always one of the supposedly positive things of older people is their wisdom. Mm? They probably are, could be good judges mm? but in the judiciary system uh, there is the compulsory age retirement age and few judges are over 65 very few mm? and also in the government in the ministers mm? among the ministers mm? so in South Europe for the reasons I mentioned uh, before the, uh, there is a weak tradition of participation in the case of older people. Maybe not here in Catalonia. I think in Catalonia we have a very strong civil society, but in many parts of the rest of Spain this participation is very, very weak. Yeah. Few older people participate in political campaigns, in political lobbies, yeah. and I think that it's, uh, it's an activity that I think will grow in the future, yeah. because the baby boomers will be more and more interested in that kind of things of you know lobbying for their rights eh? I sometimes wonder and maybe we can discuss this eh? why we we well we fight for for uh, equalitarian uh, gender mm, representation in the parliaments in the political in every institution eh? and we fight for the presence of people from minority for cultural or ethnic mi uh, minorities in the political ar arena too but I rarely hear of uh, any fight of putting all the people in the political arena too hmm? I don't know if, if we should do it or not but there is no discussion nobody puts this on the table hmm? and I wonder why hmm? so and just to finish hmm? we have discussed this concept of aging well different approaches to what what is the meaning of aging well hmm? 
and what are the good points of generativity, but here you have uh, some bad points because these concepts, not only the concept of generativity that maybe is too, ni too new to raise any criticisms, mm, but uh, the concept of, of successful aging, active aging, mm, healthy aging, are, uh, have give rise so, uh, to some criticism. Uh, this, this is one of, of them, the illusion of agelessness and the, well, the, the pressing to adopt a middle age, a middle adulthood ethics. Uh, in this case, aging well to, um, would be um, imagined as an extended middle adulthood. And some people say that Mm, these uh, aging well concepts, what they do is to impose middle adulthood and youthful values to the older people. That, that is, age well is not age at all. Mm? And this, mm, and this is a paradox, can be a, a kind of ageism too. Mm? And obviously, some of these concepts, basically, the row and can. Uh, concept of successful aging uh, have, has been criticized because they, imp they, they pose an ideal state uh, that uh, you should attain if you want to be considered as a successful ager. Uh, but some people, hmm, and this is the second criticism, hmm, some people, people with disabilities, people who are impoverished and people who are isolated and people who come from uh, different uh, cultures have more difficulties in attaining that ideal state of successful aging and of being involved in what is considered active aging too mm? or productive aging. Mm? So, the very effort to conceptualize what is aging well eh, can be uh, can have bad points eh, because it uh, proposes an standardized view of what is aging, eh. and I think that uh, and so some people even 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 talk about what is the values that are inside that concepts eh, that American values of of consuming of producing, of being active, mm, and of a radical, uh, radical self-determination. Eh? So, if you age well, it's because you have done the effort, but if you don't age well, it's your fault. Mm? It is you, the one uh, we have to blame. Mm? In this context, of course, the context, the co contextual, factors doesn't count. Mm? So what is the conception of aging we need? The aging well we need. And what is the conception of generativity that I, I, I defend? Eh? Is one concept that uh, is against the prescriptive nature of a standardized definition of aging well. We have to take into account diversity. There is a diverse ways of aging well. In this case, generativity maybe is not for all, mm? and nothing happens. Mm? I'm happy with that. Uh, mm? I don't think that everyone should be, must be generative uh, every time of his or her life. Uh, but what I defend is to give opportunities, mm? <coughs> so that people who want to be generative, who, wa uh, who wants to be involved in that kind of activities, we have, uh, we have. Uh, viewed uh, before, they can do it. Hmm? So, uh, recognize that one, mm, what, is, uh, what is the meaning of aging well in case of frailty, of disability, of dementia? Can people with dementia age well? I think so. Hmm? But not in the same way as people who are uh, active, uh, who are healthier. And this is very important. Uh, people has not be born older. 
people has a life. Yeah? Every one of us has a life trajectory. And when you are older, that life trajectory is very important to understand what is, uh, what your preferences are, what is the style of life you want to lead, hmm? what is aging well for you. Huh? So maybe it's better if we don't act af as if older people are that other people who happen to have 65 years old and think as if they have been old forever because this is not the case, obviously. Hmm? So, just to finish uh, with a quotation of Ericsson, in comparison with, yo with youth, older age is more and less at the same time. Uh, well, mm, thank you for your attention. Yeah. And of course, I will be happy to, I don't know if to respond, I don't know if I have many responses, huh? but to discuss with you uh, if you have uh, some doubt, some criticism, hmm? something that you want to say. Sure. Uh, thank you so much for your Please, interesting. Sorry. Thank you so much for a really interesting presentation. Um, I'm wondering. I, I, I'm thinking too about the concept of generativity, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if, in the interest of uh, recognizing diversity, if there's ways to think about generativity that are less associated with the traditional family, sort of, so uh, intergenerational mm -hmm. friendships that are caring, mm -hmm. and yes. so just wondering about the, that. The, the array of generative activities that I discuss is not by no means uh, closed. Eh? Friendships, hmm? maybe one thing that, that I haven't discussed here, and maybe it's a good, a good place uh, to discuss it, is uh, if, for instance, technology hmm, doesn't give rise to new forms of being generative. Hmm? Hmm? Not only change the traditional ones, but to create new ones. Eh? For instance, one of the studies in which uh, Mireya uh, is also involved eh, is about uh, how blogging can be a very generative activity for many older people. Eh? You know that blogging is not a very typical activity in later life, but there are some people who uh, run blogs. Eh? And we have interviewed some of them. Mm? We have 20 something mm, interviews. Mm? And we have uh, asked, we asked them for their reasons mm? and what consequences, what is the impact of blogging in their lives? Mm? Why, why to run a blog when you are 70? Mm? And uh, many of the responses, mm? not all, but many, has to do with this desire to, to, to contribute, to leave a legacy, to, well, to be read and be helpful for someone. Eh? So blogging, friendships, eh? even while well, the family is changing and we, we have considered only the traditional roles of the traditional family, be a parent, of, but in these complex families, maybe generativity has new uh, ways of, of of uh, be, put, be put in practice. Uh, you are totally right. Mm? Thank you. Um, yeah, I think uh, that that idea of generativity seems to be really rich and um, and can be very broad. Mm -hmm. But when it's when it's presented as being about about the future, about the next generation, I worry a little that it um, that it prioritizes the younger generations, and it? that it prior that that it gives more it gives more value to mm -hmm. to the next generation, to youth. And I, I mean, just rhetorically, I think that that the kinds of ways of of inhabiting generativity that you suggest 
um, offer all kinds of, of uh, uh, activities that, uh, um, that aren't necessarily only about younger generations or the future, but, but about the present. Um, I, just, I just worry about that initial definition of generativity about being about. Yes, this, yeah. this is the Erickson definition. Huh? And uh, as well as care for the next generation, I have also put and contribute yeah. for the sustainment of the society, of the community. Yeah. Huh? And yeah. uh, if I have not understood but the, you have said that the benefits of generativity lie, lies basically on the next generation. But you have to take into account that this is a, a give and back process. Yeah? G by giving, yeah. you are transforming yourself. This is my view. Yeah? Yeah. That one doing good, one can be, mm, be good too. Yeah? By giving to the next generation in, in this case, yeah? right. you are gaining things too. Yeah? And maybe if you are not gaining things, this activity cannot be considered um, truly generative. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because I think that in many cases, that kind of activities doesn't guarantee that generativity is involved. Eh? To my view, they are potentially generative. But not in each case, the, ge the generative desires, concerns, interests are involved in, for instance, uh, take care of, of grandchildren, or take care of dependent people, or even uh, being in the political arena. Hmm? You can, you, it's not compulsory to be very generative to be in the political arena. There are other reasons, and some of them are not at all generative. Hmm? I, understand, I understand generativity as a factor that can be involved in, that, in these kind of activities. Yeah? And a factor that has been, in my view, mm, neglected. Yeah? Uh, I don't have a, a question, I only compliment, because I, I was also, also always wondering, not only wondering, but getting irritation that about this aging well and um, this concept is a kind of what you said, that you make people responsible. Mm. Everybody can do it, and if you don't do it, it's your own um, responsibility. Yeah. Mm. And even governments can make bad use of that. They can say it's your own responsibility. Be active. Your family should be active, your mm. friends. If not, huh, we don't take care of you. So I think your, your concept um, is, is, is anyhow is a first step in the direction of solution that it's not obligatory to do it. You can no. do it at different levels. Mm -hmm. So I would really say I, I, I really like that. And then about Ericsson. Um, I think he would have liked your your talk. And every member, he, he lived very, he got very old. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. And his wife too, I guess. Yeah. They worked John. together for the others who don't. I, I just read it some some two years ago, so I don't remember exactly. But if I remember well, they lived very long. They worked together, yeah. and they had different life phases. So each time they also wrote about their own life phase, but they moved on and moved on and got older and got older. And even seeing that she survived him by 10 years, yeah. and that she made one final paper or chapter yeah. Yeah. to add, again, a decade. A ninth so, stage. A life stage. That so grand generativity. Huh? Exactly. So <laughs> that was well, I, I didn't mention grand generativity just yeah. to not uh, complicate the yeah. whole picture. Yeah. But, 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 but about that, so I yeah. think that both of them would have liked your talk. Yeah. There, is, there is an interesting video in YouTube that I recommend you mm, to, to see. Uh, it's an interview with uh, John Erickson and Eric Erickson. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can find it in YouTube very easily. And they say very interesting things. They are very old. Uh, yeah. Eric Erickson almost cannot speak. Yeah. At all. Uh, okay. Anyway. Thank you very much. Someone else? Yeah. Barbara. One thing that is interesting about this final ninth stage, uh, that I think is is uh, is the urge to leave a legacy uh, and to complement that uh, that uh, that uh, desire to to contribute with the acceptation of receiving, yeah. of receiving help. Yeah. That is very difficult for some older people. Eh? Eh? Some older people don't want to be helped. 
and by not wanting to be helped, they sometimes create many difficulties. <laughs> it's difficult to accept. Huh? So thank you. Um, you're, you, you know you're in a group with a group of people, and when you go with a big set of concepts, everybody wants to drill down in some of the details, and what about this, and what about that? <laughs> um, and also, all of us struggle with modifying aging. Right. As soon Wait, as sorry? when you modify aging, uh -huh. healthy aging, successful aging, generativity aging, right? It it opens up uh, different kinds of uh, possibilities. So, right. you know, my observation to, uh, when I was listening to you, you had talked about and you had said that um, uh, caring for parents it could be a source of satisfaction and meaning. And when you talked about parents taking care of, grandparents taking care of children, mm -hmm. it wasn't characterized that way. And there are people who do not want to care for their grandchildren, mm -hmm. um, yeah. who are forced to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think it's important to also talk about some of the, because uh, that gets romanticized, that we like yeah. doing that kind of labor. And I think that it would be good not to romanticize it. On mm -hmm. the other hand, I think it's what's really interesting is what that reveals to us about youth. And uh, that when you care for younger people, how uh, drainative that is, whereas you care for an older person, it, it's, it's, it's laborious or whatever. And I, there's a lot of labor in caring, mm. caring for children and the imperative and the driving of the youth narrative around that, that romanticization. So anyway, just thinking about that. Yeah, that, I the, completely the agree with you. I personally know some grandmothers that mm, would, not, would prefer not care for their grandchildren. Uh, in fact, three or four years ago, we, we made a study to just to examine this. Mm? To what point grandmothers, because we studied grandmothers, are free. Mm? And they are not really free, um, totally free. Mm? They are very satisfied. Mm? They found meaning in caring for children. But there is a kind of implicit contract. Huh? Uh, it's implicit that they should care for. And our point there is that in many times, caring for grandchildren is not, is not uh, done just because you are grandparent, but just because you are pa parent. Because you want to help not your grandchildren. You want to help your children. Hmm? You are to go on helping your children. And caring for grandchildren is a way to do that. Eh? The main reason was not grandchildren, but your children. And uh, obviously, we, I don't want to romanticize mm -hmm. mm? not only grandparenting, but older age. Yeah. Mm? But the bad and the good can, can live together. Mm? It's not a contradiction to feel burdened, eh, caring for, for, a, for a relative who is dependent, to feel very, very stressed, and at the same time have mm, very positive moments too, very positive emotions, and, and feel that, that your task has meaning, and to feel that this task, despite the burden, despite the stress, uh, is contributing to your own growth as a person. Mm? Sometimes some people only feel that mm, after the relative died, mm? Mm? but many people feel that uh, while they are caring for. Mm? S sorry, I kind of stole the mic away, um, and I'll give it back, but uh, just a comment on that, and having done work in the area, I think one of the things I've always struggled with is sort of this, um, this concept of stages, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I struggle with the grand generativity for that reason. Mm -hmm. And so you made some really interesting critiques of, of the theory, and I think that was really helpful. Um, but I think that there is opportunity to think more broadly around generativity as something that develops across the yeah. lifespan yeah. and happens in a very bi-directional way, not just from the older generation to the younger as well. So that was just one quick comment. Um, mm. But I, I want to sort of take issue a little bit around leisure. Um, and Galit, you might uh, want to chime in as well. So I appreciated your comments about leisure, and I think you, you had some interesting thoughts and critiques there. What I might sort of suggest is that um, we think about leisure in different ways. And sometimes, again, 
it gets taken up as this individualistic activity based thing mm -hmm. and that's really more recreation right and if we think of leisure in terms of opportunities for meaningful engagement mm -hmm. and more as a state of mind or a subjective experience mm -hmm. i think there's opportunity to look at leisure rather than the bottom stage of your sort of maslow like pyramid <laughs> um, that you presented there rather than that and again not looking at in a normative way and judging around what's appropriate leisure to engage mm -hmm. in or not in. and i appreciate the comment you made on that but more is leisure as a context in those different areas so my interest is in leisure in families and that looks different and is experienced differently than individual leisure or recreation engagement there's a significant body of work coming out of leisure studies around the potential for leisure in community development and in the mm -hmm. facilitation of social capital. So in those other levels mm -hmm. as we go, mm -hmm. I think there's opportunity to think about it in sort of different ways maybe. I wasn't. Well, maybe I should change the world. <laughs> well, that's uh, not, I don't, I don't know about just a word. I think it's yeah, about yeah, yeah. how Chase, we think yeah, of, yeah. of the place of that yeah. um, and, and just the yeah, opportun obviously opportunities. Obviously, leisure is more, it's a far more complex thing that I have presented. <laughs> I have presented only one side of leisure. Probably you, as an expert, will, will well, I find <laughs> examples of, of, of leisure activities that are more than just having fun. Hmm? Absolutely. I think there's yeah. lots of opportunity yeah. for very purposive, um, generative yeah. expression mm -hmm. through leisure. So. And as, uh, as for your first comment, uh, you rem <coughs> I remind some interesting papers by Michael Pratt. Mm -hmm. mm? You know Michael Pratt, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that uh, tackles the, the topic too. Huh? How generativity can be found also in, in young adulthood huh? and even in, in adolescence. Huh? Mm -hmm. So the, that theory of stages is, is, mm, yeah, is OK, but I don't believe in stages. Yeah. Mm? I think that probably what, is the, what Ericsson, uh, what I like of Ericsson theories is the kind of life topics that are important in, mm, throughout your life, because you can have identity work or identity crisis in your adolescence for the first time, but identity can resurge throughout your life, hmm? obviously. Uh, and the same for intimacy, hmm? the same for integrity, why not? Uh, and obviously for generativity, as, uh, as I try to, to, to show. Hmm? Thank you. Um, Sam, thank you for your talk. Dr. Miller, um, this is more of a, a dilemma around political um, participation, um, mm -hmm. which has to do with the fact that there's cases where, where a lot of older people have participated politically. We get outcomes such as the defeat of the Martin Luther King holiday in Arizona, um, mm -hmm. Brex, uh, Brexit, sorry, in the UK. <laughs> um, uh, a majority of polls showing that older voters favor Donald Trump in the United States, uh, including uh, a lot majority of older voters favor uh, gun ownership mm -hmm. and further gun freedom, actually, mm -hmm. um, in the United States. Um, lots of other examples of lots of political participation by older citizens who do believe in national security, risk-free communities, um, generating uh, safety for the next generation by keeping foreigners away, um, anti-immigration laws. Um, so they are, I think, uh, being active in generative mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. through those means. Yeah, yeah, it's a paradox. Eh? Being involved politically not always means to, to aim at goals that we share. Eh? Well, they I share them. That. They do share them. That's the ethical we, dilemma. Or, or we, we, we consider good or... Well, this is what I'm kind of get at. Yeah. Who's the one who considers good? Mm? Yeah, but... but Where but, does uh, the good come my from? My point is that the fact of participate is generative. Eh? You can 
mm, uh, you know, uh, it's difficult to express this in English. Uh, mm. In the case of political participation, mm, uh, what defines uh, mm, how good or the, outco the outcomes of the uh, generative activity, I think, is not, at least in the level I have, I have uh, proposed the concept, is not the aim of the political change you want to attain, but the process of participating. Eh? I would prefer to have these voices heard than to have these voices silent. Eh? In no, I'm not opposing hmm? that to be silent. No, 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 I know, I know. In spite of, of uh, I personally, but this is just my, my opinion, eh? uh, uh, share or not share the aims of that political uh, activities. Also, lobbying. Hmm? Lobbying is not always good. And here in the European Union, we have many good examples of how the ones who have more capacity to, for lobbying gain more things. Eh? get more benefits. Eh? It's not always positive. Uh, and uh, the political activity is, is not always for the common God, good, but for the good of your own uh, particular uh, interest group. Of hmm? this, is, this opens uh, a kind of worms, of, of course, <laughs> because it's... It, but, but but I think that is another level that is, it, that is not, uh, I don't see it particularly psychological. Hmm? I think it's more social, political, or hmm? ideological, hmm? Sure. to my view. Hmm? Okay. But thank you for your question. It's, it's, it's something to think about it, huh? of course. This is kind of looping back a little bit to uh, Barbara's uh -huh. comment. Uh, th thank you for your presentation uh, also. Um, you know, we need to, of course, always be thinking about what specific groups we're looking at. And so I'm coming back a little bit to the grandparent mm -hmm. issue. And this is just mild, a mild corrective in a way of what we think about. Because mm -hmm. I think some of the images on the screen and the like, we have this set of ideological values about what yeah. it means to be these various you know, age classifications. Yeah. Uh, the community that I work with, um, it's not uncommon to be, to find people who are 42, 43, and are grandparents. Um, yeah. And so yeah. this, this yeah. resets some of the thinking about mm -hmm. some of the things you presented. Yeah. So that's just yeah. kind of a mild corrective yeah. in yeah. what groups we're looking at and, and how age gets understood and, yeah. and experienced in those communities. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm? Grandparenting is, is not uh, just for all the people that are younger one parents. Huh? My turn to say thank you. Um, I've got a couple of remarks and then a question. Um, adding to the same kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a bit concerned about how most of the elements that support the activities are based in a very specific view of the lifespan. And I'm thinking of Jody Taylor's work amongst others who, for instance, using uh, thinking about different forms of temporalities that do not focus on living, marrying, getting children, yeah. and so yeah. on. But that, that has significant impacts on thinking about what is generativity. So I'm, mm. I'm, I'm just putting it out. Um, the other aspect is, and I, it, it's, it's just a <coughs> reaction, saying, why not have fun? Um, as if fun was not as significant mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. having and taking part in some political activism. So again, the pyramid uh, for me is, is, a, is a question. It's like, yeah. why value this more than this kind of thing? Yeah. Um, and the, the, the question also is for me is about I'm thinking of the work of some of our colleagues I'm thinking of Paul Higgs and Chris Gillard's recent book on what they call fourth age not so much in terms of a stage but in terms of what they call a social imagination mm -hmm. thinking about uh, lots of what we see as the different face of aging maybe suggests in their view 
also how we still have this view of the abject as the real aging that we're not talking about, that the aging that is out of the map of aging. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking, how about that part of aging where aging is for people who are not generative? So what happens with that in your hmm. view of thinking about it? Thank you. Well, um, as for the fun thing, yes. uh, well, it was not my intention at all say that fun is uh, not bad, but less good than being politically involved or um, no 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 it's not my that that is because i think that the the shape of the that pyramid shape that is of course that is i think that in our own group is very a rather polemic issue hmm? if we should put that image or not huh? because that implication comes um, auto automatically huh? in my view that pyramid uh, shape doesn't mean that one activity is better than another. Hmm? I think people, if, hmm? for instance, I don't, I don't know, my mother eh, never participated politically, never go to the university of the third age. Hmm? She wants to, to watch TV hmm? and to chat with their friends. And for me, it's absolutely okay. It's his way of, of aging well. Eh? I think generativity or political participation or volunteering uh, don't, ha don't have to, to, to be compulsory at all. Eh? Because if it uh, if was compulsory, maybe it uh, wouldn't be generative. Hmm? And people who are not generative at all, so uh, for me it's, it's perfectly Mm, okay, eh? mm, I don't want to 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 yes to promote that every eh, people over X age eh, go on uh, lobbying or go on volunteering or go on. No, mm? one of the things that uh, has older age in my view is not a thing of older age. It's a progressive gain. Is freedom. Mm? You are many bad things. Aging is, uh, gets, as you age, you get many bad things, but you get some good ones too. And maybe freedom is one of them. Hmm? You depend of, of yourself. Huh? And what I'm worried about is about the lack of, of opportunities to exert your freedom, not about uh, that there are few people who are doing what I think that is the best that people should do, eh? because it's my opinion, and maybe it's not my mother's opinion. Eh? At the beginning, I tried to convince her to go to the, <laughs> to the university of the third age. He, he looked at me as, as, as if I was mad. Eh? Why? <laughs> well, maybe that's the question, why? Hmm? If, she dis if she doesn't want, it's, it's his uh, option. Eh? What, uh, what, uh, what I want to be sure about is about their options for people who do want to go to, to training programs or to volunteering um, uh, organizations. Or, hmm? But uh, maybe we, we have to re rethink the pyramid kind of. Eh? The pyramid means not a question of values. Hmm? But the question of, of, of quantity of people who do every activity, hmm? of frequency, hmm? more or less. But uh, well, I perfectly, mm, I'm aware that there are some problems with this Maslow kind of thing. Eh? It's very, well, very appealing at the first view, but when you think twice, maybe there are more, they create more problems than uh, the problems it solves. Eh? Mm? So we have to rethink that kind of pyramid, or, or at least put a note <laughs> at, <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Eh? Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you as well for your presentation. Mm. I very much appreciated it. And, um, 
Uh, just two things I wanted to mention. There was also a study, well, there's an article that I remember reading in 2012 in the Journal of Aging Studies, um, introducing the concept of harmonious aging, yeah. which was very, very similar to generat la générativité. So I just wanted to hear you uh, on, this, on, on these two concepts, actually. That's my first question. Mm. My second question is, um, in terms of générativité, and I'm thinking of the, the, the very old, the, the, mm. the um, I don't want to categorize, but sometimes it's easier to explain, mm. the, the, the individuals that are in the fourth or even the fifth age, mm -hmm. for example, that cannot, in, your, in, in what you've explained in your model, that may be not able to socially participate for whatever reason, that cannot maybe uh, care for another person because mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have difficulties uh, on their own to care for their own selves. How could society feed or nourish la générativité for these individuals? How do you get socially valued when mm -hmm. even the definition of générativité still falls into some kind of a, um, objective criteria of being, being socially génératif? Do you know what I mean? So there, yep. there's still some yep. kind of a quantifiable uh, definition behind la générativité. So what about, and I'm going to use a very basic example, I'm thinking of my own mother. She was in bed in a long-term care facility. Mm -hmm. How do you nourish la générativité as, as a mm. society? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I'm, I know there is a way, but I'm just thinking that, that needs to be, there needs to be a, sh a shift of paradigm here that mm -hmm. even goes behind the definition, the, la, la definition that you've provided of générativité. I'm sorry, I'm switching French to English. This is my call. I apologize. <laughs> so my first question again, the concept I'm of harmonious thinking. aging, mm -hmm. how does it relate to générativité? Second question, how do we nourish générativité for very old individuals that are mm -hmm. maybe dependent? Please put the, my, uh -huh. my, my, the word dependent yeah. uh, into brackets. Yeah. Thank you. But as, as for the first question, I read the article you mentioned. Yeah. Huh? It was an interesting yeah. uh, article, but for me, as far as I can remember it, uh, but I read it mm, some time ago, for me it's quite it's, mm, too psychological in a way. Huh? I, am, uh, I, I am a psychologist, so it's, very, it's a paradox that I complain one concept as too psychological. But what I think that generativity has and, uh, and <coughs> concepts like harmonious aging doesn't have is that kind of, of, of uh, mm, how people relate with other people. Eh? Harmonious aging, to my view, and as I far as I remember the concept, um, uh, mm, springs from that Easter tradition of spirituality, mm -hmm. eh, of uh, Jero transcendence, the concept of Thorsan. Eh? And that's okay, but I think that is another level. Mm? I think that maybe to me it uh, seems more similar to integrity than to generativity, to me. Mm? And as for the second question, this is a real challenge. Eh? And probably as uh, many of the examples of generative activities that I showed cannot be applied or applied to a very little extent to people who live with uh, severe disabilities. The challenge is to find in which way these people, if they can, and, mm, uh, can, be, can contribute to. Maybe the scope of the contribution should be redefined. Hmm? Maybe, so and... I would say, sorry to interrupt, the definition of contribution. Yeah, yeah. The definition mm -hmm. of social participation. Yeah. I think that in the case of, of these uh, people with uh, living with severe dependencies, I think that one thing that can be linked to this generativity is if we treat them as a persons, uh, trying to... Uh, value what they, they because everyone has something to give, eh? try to value this mm -hmm. eh? and in my view is very is very uh, related to implement that 
person-centered care approach. Hmm? Just if we apply this approach, we can find some areas of generativity, of integrity too, of course, huh? and intimacy, hmm? identity, huh? all the life issues that uh, Erickson proposed. Hmm? But uh, I think Challenge. your question is, is very important, very important. Huh? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, any more questions in the room? So, yeah, sure. Margarita? Uh, just a last uh, short one question. Um, I was um, wondering the links between uh, creativity and generativity is something uh -huh. that is already established uh -huh. in this uh, sense. Thanks. Uh -huh. I haven't thought about that. Uh, I think that, that it, should, it should have a link. And I remember having read some years ago a paper about creativity and generativity, maybe in the International Journal of Asian Development, Asian and Human Development. But I don't know what to answer. Uh, <laughs> I suppose that, that, that uh, we have, uh, I have, shown the more typical and topical and maybe value charge uh, uh, forms of activities uh, that uh, can be potentially uh, generative. Mm? I suppose that creativity could be a way, I don't know, mm, to find new forms of express this desire to contribute. Mm? But uh, Difficult to, to answer one thing that I have, I have not thought about it. No? Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Feliciano. Muchas no, gracias. Thanks to you all. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thank you for challenging me. Mm? <laughs> I should have, uh, well, mm, jot down some notes about uh, some of the issues that are uh, right here and well I hope the conference will will not my talk but the whole conference will be useful for you and well welcome to Barcelona too no? sure mm. and I hope that his conference will be uh, somehow uh, creating new ideas and new uh, mm -hmm. comments and new discussions for all of us so uh, you're co welcome now there's some food outside so mm. for everyone we expect you to stay with us and network for a while and we will back to work for the small working group uh, in one hour more or less yeah. thank Just you one thing generativity i'm afraid is not the philosophical stone <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>